Well, welcome to week three, Explore the Bible. We continue through the book of Isaiah. Today we're in Isaiah chapter seven. And before we look at this, a couple of things we need to understand to kind of about the passage and maybe about some history that's going on. We're here in the, uh, Isaiah is preaching in the eighth century BC. So that's the 700s, around 735 or so, somewhere in there. Um, and as we read this passage today, we're going to see the name Ephraim. Ephraim is the name of one of the tribes, okay, of Israel, but it's the name here, kind of the shorthand for Israel or the northern tribe, okay. Um, the nation splits in two into a northern tribe that is called Israel and a southern tribe called Judah, named Judah after the main tribe in the southern area. Okay, and so this northern area is then sometimes shorthanded in Isaiah called Ephraim, okay? All right, and then we've got King Ahaz. Now, King Ahaz is a sorry guy. He, he is a man, and kings will say he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He is a bad king, but he is gaining an opportunity here in Isaiah chapter 7. As the prophet comes to him, he is offered an opportunity at grace. Uh, God gives him wisdom, is going to share wisdom from him about what he ought to do and how he should lead the people, and then we'll see how Ahaz responds to that. So let's look here, chapter 7, verse 7 or verse 9. This is what the Lord says. It will not happen. It will not occur. That is an invasion. It will not happen. It will not occur. The chief of Ephraim is Samaria. The chief city of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. Remember, Ephraim is the northern kingdom, okay? If you do not stand firm in your faith, then you will not stand at all. Here is the exhortation from, from uh, Isaiah, the promise that comes from the Lord that you're not going to be invaded. God's going to protect you if you'll stand firm in your faith. But if you will not stand firm in your faith, if you will not trust, and, and here we talk about not personal faith, but in the faith uh, of uh, the Jewish faith, the faith of who God is and, and God's protection, God's covenant over the nation, God's covenant uh, with the people and, and his promises to them. If you will not stand firm in that, then you will not stand. You'll fall if you don't stand firm. Okay, there are some times that we have to stand firm. We have to know, okay, I just know God's going to deal with us in a way that honors himself, uh, in a way that brings glory to himself, and I know that he's going to keep his promises. I know he's going to keep his promises, so I'm just going to stand firm, believing God will keep his promises. But if we will not stand firm, then we'll fall. If you don't hold on to your faith, then you're going to, I mean, that just kind of makes sense, right? If you don't, if you don't stand firm in your faith, then you're going to fall, Okay. So, then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, and he says, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. It can be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. The Lord comes to Ahaz through Isaiah and says, Ask for a sign. Whatever sign you want to ask for, ask for a sign. I don't care where it is, down, down into the death, as high as the heavens, whatever this sign is, just ask for a sign. God will show you, he will bear witness to you that he will keep his promise. Here's a, an amazing offer, okay, amazing offer to say, look, let me show you. I want to bless you. I want to protect you. I'm willing to do it. I will do it. Ask for a sign so that I can prove that to you. But Ahaz replied, I will not ask. I will not test the Lord. Okay, you just saw this verse out of, out of the scripture. You would think, well, what a man of faith Ahaz is. Let me tell you, Ahaz was a selfish man who had made up his mind he was not going to trust the Lord, and he hid behind spirituality and spiritual talk. Okay? he was God didn't say, um, don't test me. God, in fact, here said, ask for a sign. Ask for a sign. I want to give you a sign. I want to show you. And Ahaz says, oh, I'm not going to ask that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to test the Lord. Like, he's all spiritual and all that. Look, not testing the Lord is like when, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted Jesus to come do some tricks for them, okay? Prove to us who you are. They're, they're demanding that of God. This is God offering, and Ahaz turning down God's offer and, and couching it in the terms of, I'm too spiritual to do that. But the reality was, he didn't want to do what God wanted. He wanted to make a, a, an agreement with some other nations to protect him. He didn't want God to protect him. He thought he could figure it out because if God protected him, then, then he would have to acknowledge that God is there and that God is the king of the real king of Israel and that he's going to have to change his ways. Because let me tell you, Ahaz was a sorry guy. 
Ahaz practiced child sacrifices. He was a sorry guy. He completely rejected the covenant. And, and here now, the Lord is offering him this opportunity, even in all, out of all of that, the Lord is offering him an opportunity to, to look, come be obedient now. Let me show you that, that you can trust me. I will keep my promise. I'm not leading you down some path. And Ahaz says, no, I don't want it. I'm not going to do it. And Isaiah said, listen, house of David, here Isaiah is speaking to the nation, right? Is it not enough for you to try the patience of men? Will you also try the patience of my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. Okay, you may recognize that verse, right? That prophecy of the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Christ. He will be named God with us, Emmanuel. Okay. There's a little bit of a scold here, and it's kind of funny how we don't think about how that verse fits in the context of when it was said, but there's a scolding that takes place where Isaiah says, man, you've tried uh, you know, my patience, you're trying God's patience. What's wrong with you, nation? God's going to give you a sign, and that sign is going, to be, is going to be when a virgin gives birth to a son, and they'll name him Emmanuel. You know what the reality is then here? You're not going to get a sign now. The sign will be generations away, literally 800 years away. <clears throat> That's when they're 700 and something years away. That's when the sign will come. The virgin will conceive and have a son and name him Emmanuel. There, there's your son. Um, look, we can, um, we can respond to God as we want to. We can say, Lord, I, I want to hear from you, um, and I'm seeking you. Or we can say, Lord, I don't want anything to do with you. And, and God would still come to us and offer us an opportunity to follow. But, but look, you keep pushing away that opportunity to follow. You keep pushing away that opportunity to faith, to exercise faith, to stand in your faith. And God will stop offering. And it will pass you by. It may pass by you for generations. Okay, it may just pass by for generations. This opportunity is offered, and and Ahaz he didn't want anything to do with it. He says, "Oh, you're going to get a sign. He will come. God will eventually. God is going to do what God said He's going to do. Now He may not do it now because you don't want to be a part of it, but He'll do it. The Lord will bring on you, your people, and your father's house such a time as has never been been." Since Ephraim separated from Judah, that's the northern kingdom from the southern kingdom, he will bring the king of Assyria. This is um, basically Isaiah telling them, look, God's going to use the nation of Assyria to come and, and he is going to discipline the people of Israel. He's going to discipline his people through a pagan nation. He offered an opportunity for, for um, rescue. He offered an opportunity for deliverance. If you'll be a person of faith, you can see God's deliverance. You can see God move. He's begging Ahaz to take him up on that opportunity. This grace and mercy offered, Ahaz won't take it. God says, okay, well, then you'll receive what you've asked for. You're going to get what you've asked for. And I don't think you're going to like it. That's what you're going to get. But I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. I just won't do it with you. I won't, I'll do it later. I won't do it through you. Man, God is determined that he's going to protect the line of David because from that line comes the son named Emmanuel, Jesus. But Ahaz is the man of disgrace in that line, not a man of honor. All right. Hey, hope this helped. Great passages as we go through Isaiah. What a, what a tremendous book. And it's always important to kind of set ourselves in the historical context, even in a prophetic book. It happens in history, so it's important to kind of read up on that history and have an idea of what's going on. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Like, comment. Uh, let us know what you think about it. We'll see you next time.